again, I'm going to ask you to defer questions until the break, which will be coming up after our next talk. The final speaker in the first part of the program is Dr. Ruth Heller. Uh, Ruth is our, a graduate of our own here from Tel Aviv University, and we're glad that she's now back on our faculty in the Department of Statistics and Operations Research. She's going to be talking about false discovery rate controlling procedures for discrete tests. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak here. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, false discovery rate controlling procedures. Uh, there have been a lot of research going on in the, day, in the, in the last decade and a half uh, about uh, FDR controlling procedures. Uh, however, very little attention has been given to uh, discrete tests when the data is discrete, and that's what I'm going to concentrate on. Uh, so I'm going to first uh, talk about some motivating applications. Uh, then I'm going to discuss uh, the conservativeness of uh, some uh, widely used step-up and step-down uh, procedures for FDR control uh, when the data is discrete. And I'm going to suggest uh, uh, alternatives that are, uh, take uh, the discreteness into account uh, uh, to gain power. And finally, I'm going to give some conclusions in uh, future research. Um, so the first application is uh, that of uh, pharma to the pharmacovigilance systems for marketed medicines. Uh, these are large databases that um, uh, collect and monitor spontaneous uh, reports of suspected adverse events from healthcare <coughs> providers. And the accumulation of such reports allows detecting new adverse event reactions after the drug marketing approval, which is uh, there's always still a safety concern even after the drug has been approved, and this is what uh, it comes uh, to, to monitor. Uh, so uh, there are multiple hypotheses of no association between drugs and adverse events uh, that are simultaneously tested. Um, and, uh, and the goal is to actually find unexpected associations and then uh, further uh, uh, follow up on them to see if uh, there is need uh, to some additional regulation of the drug. Um, another application is uh, at the frontier of uh, genomics research, and that's uh, high-throughput next-generation sequencing. Um, the output of sequence, uh, sequencing platforms is a list of sequence reads. These sequences are mapped to their genomic locations, and the data for statistical analysis then is tag counts. So if you want now to test uh, whether a region and the genome is enriched, uh, you have to use the knowledge distributions of counts uh, uh, to, to decide upon that. Um, and finally, another application is that of genome-wide association studies. Um, where in genome-wide association studies, uh, the aim is to identify uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, that are associated with disease risk or predisposition to certain medical conditions. Uh, so you have uh, many SNPs, uh, about a million, and you have, you're testing for association with a disease in each one of them. Um, so common aspects of these applications is uh, that uh, uh, in all of them, we don't need to be too conservative. We don't want to be too conservative with a threshold chosen for discovery. Uh, for example, in pharmacovigilance, uh, uh, we want to be able to identify those unexpected uh, associations in order to follow up on them. We don't want not to be able to do that just because of lack of power. Uh, the associations found are destined to be further investigated. And uh, it is possible to tolerate few false discoveries as long as they are a small fraction of the discoveries. Uh, so that is uh, what uh, guides us actually to be uh, to to choose as an error measure for control the false discovery rate uh, rather than the more conservative family-wise error. <coughs> and finally, in all those applications, the data is discrete. Uh, the notation I'm going to use is uh, that I have sorted p-values, p1 up to e pm, uh, and they correspond to hypothesis h1 up to hm. Uh, i0 is the set of indices of the true null hypothesis. M0 is the cardinality of the set I0, so it's basically the number of true null hypotheses. 
And uh, when I apply multiple testing procedure, I have false positives and true positives. So V is the number of true null hypotheses rejected, and R is the number of null hypotheses that are rejected. Now, the false discovery rate that was introduced in the seminal paper by Benjamin and Hochberg in 1995 um, is the expected proportion of false positives out of all the discoveries. So it is uh, this uh, uh, term here. And the false discovery rate is at most equal to the family-wise error. It is exactly equal to it if uh, the number, or if all hypotheses are basically null hypotheses. However, when some hypotheses are false, the FDR controlling procedure may provide greater power than the family-wise error controlling procedures. And uh, the original um, procedure that was introduced uh, in that paper, I will call it uh, from now on uh, the BH procedure, um, is still very popular, and it's as follows. If we look at it in terms of adjusted p-value, what it says is that we look at the j largest adjusted p-value by the BH procedure. It's basically the minimum of all the I, of i greater or equal to j of m over i times the i's largest uh, p-value. So uh, the BH procedure at level q reject all the hypotheses whose BH adjusted p-value is at most q. So this is basically the BH procedure. Um, and now, um, for independent p-values, it was shown in that paper that the false discovery rate is indeed at most uh, the uh, desired level q times uh, fra the fraction of uh, true null hypothesis out of all the hypotheses. Um, now, if, uh, if the null distribution of the p-values is uniform, and that's what it is uh, typically when uh, uh, you have a continuous test statistic, continuous data, then equality holds, bec and, and the reason for that is that uh, you can look at, at uh, the FDR as a sum of various terms, and these various terms uh, look like that. So basically, if under the null, the p-value uh, is uh, uh, uniform, then the probability of the p-value being at most a certain constant is equal to that constant. And then uh, you sum up all these terms, and you get exactly uh, uh, this bound here. Now, for discrete statistics, this equality holds only if the p-value can take on exactly that constant value. Because uh, when the test statistics are discrete, then also the p-values uh, can take on only a discrete number of, uh, of values. Uh, so if uh, this uh, particular term um, uh, is not one of the, uh, this particular constant is not one of the constants that the p-value can take on, then uh, what we're going to get is actually a strict inequality. So the probability under the null that the p-value is at most uh, uh, this constant is actually strictly less than that constant. And now you sum all those uh, terms and you get basically an expression for the FDR that is strictly less uh, than, uh, uh, than the upper bound here. Now the greater the gap between this term and this term, uh, the smaller the true FDR level of the BH procedure. So this is where the conservatism uh, comes in uh, when you have uh, discrete tests. Uh, additional properties of the BH procedure um, are that it actually controls the FDR also when the p-values are dependent. Uh, for um, uh, uh, positive dependency, then there is proven control of the FDR. Uh, this is by a paper by Benjamin and Yucutiel in 2001. Uh, for general dependency, they showed that uh, it is at most uh, this uh, larger uh, constant here. Uh, however, practically for, uh, uh, the, for situations of dependence that are encountered, uh, it's, uh, you have to try really hard in order to uh, apply the BH procedure and actually uh, um, exceed this nominal level. So, so it has a very nice robustness property uh, that, um, that even if you apply uh, the BH procedure on dependent uh, p-values, you will still... Uh, control uh, the FDR level at the nominal level, at the desired level. Um, so what we want to do is basically to address the gap that you have for uh, discrete uh, 
uh, test statistics and address the conservatism of the BH procedure uh, while maintaining uh, this nice robustness property to uh, uh, departures from the assumption of independence. Uh, okay, so uh, let me step back and now let's look just at uh, one hypothesis. We don't have now multiple hypotheses, just uh, uh, just one, and uh, uh, discuss uh, the, the conservatism of discrete tests. Um, so uh, the, the problem arises because now if the data is discrete, then the p-value is actually, under the null, also stochastically larger than the uniform. Uh, what has been suggested uh, to do to, to address this discreteness uh, by Lancaster in 1961 is to use, instead of p-values, mid-p-values. And mid p values uh, basically uh, take the average of the p value plus the next most significant p value that uh, you can get. So uh, necessarily the mid p value is smaller than the p value. And it is uh, straightforward to show that the actual level of the test is closer to the nominal level uh, if the decision actually about rejection is based on mid p values instead of on p values. So the actual uh, level of the test, although you wanted the level of the test, the actual level that you get for discrete p-value is this value, is this term right here. It's the probability and the idea that the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, which may be uh, much smaller than alpha. Um, if you had use mid p-values instead of p-values, then the actual size of the test is this size, and uh, it is straightforward to show that uh, uh, using mid p-values, you get actually a size of a test that is closer to alpha than uh, using uh, p-values. And the reason is uh, that uh, what you really want is to have uh, uniform p-values, and you get exactly the size of your test. You cannot do that. If you look here, uh, this uh, um, solid line step function is basically uh, the cumulative distribution function of, uh, of the p-values. And the dashed uh, step function is the cumulative <coughs> distribution function of uh, mid p-values. So what you really try is to approximate this, uh, uh, this line better, which is the CDF of a uniform, and you do it much better when you use mid p-values than when you use uh, p-values. Okay? And uh, clearly you see here <coughs> that both the mid p-values and the mid p-values take on only a discrete number of steps of values. Now, uh, uh, Argosy and Gotthard uh, wrote that uh, we believe it is more sensible to use a method for which the actual error rate is closer to the nominal error rate <coughs> than happens with traditional exact inference. So inference based on mid p-value is a simple way to achieve this goal. And what we argue here is that the same carries over when you have more than one hypothesis. You actually have multiple hypotheses, but it is with uh, discrete data. Uh, so uh, we suggest to use, instead of uh, p-values, mid-p-values. It's a very small uh, uh, adjustment that can be very useful. Um, and if in, indeed, if we uh, apply the BH procedure on mid-p-values, uh, then the actual FDR level is closer to the nominal level. So basically, if, 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 this, if FDR is uh, the actual FDR level of uh, the BH procedure on the p-values, we know that it is smaller than uh, the nominal level if the p-values were uniform. <laughs> but what we can show is that uh, the mid-FDR, which is the actual FDR level uh, when you apply the BH procedure on mid-p-values, is closer to that nominal level. So we argue that uh, that that's uh, reason enough in order to use mid p values rather than p values when the data is discrete. So so we have that the actual FDR level is closer to the nominal level. In addition, the power is at least as high as that of the BH procedure on p values because the mid p values p values are necessarily smaller. So um, uh, the uh, rejection set based on mid p values will always be a superset of the rejection set uh, that is based on the BH procedure on p-values. And here is a small example. Um, we have 10 uh, 2 by 2 tables, and these are the p-values. These are the mid-p-values. The mid-p-values are always smaller than the p-values. And these are the pH adjusted p-values on uh, p-values. And here is the BH-adjusted p-values on mid p-values, and we see that uh, 
and these columns uh, just uh, the, the the numbers are always smaller than on this uh, in this column. So if you want to control the FDR level at say 10%, uh, then if you use the BH procedure on, on p-values, you would reject uh, five uh, hypotheses, whereas if you use the, mid, uh, the BH procedure on mid p-values, uh, you reject um, uh, seven hypotheses. Uh, there can be further adjustment for discreteness. Uh, one suggestion that has uh, been originally uh, given by Tarone in 1990 is uh, to actually uh, eliminate first those hypotheses that have no chance of uh, being rejected. And this uh, suggestion was also um, applied in an FDR setting by Gilbert in 2005. Uh, so basically, before you even look at the data, so you didn't compromise yet uh, your, uh, uh, the validity of uh, your procedure, you just uh, uh, you look at um, what is the smallest p-value that uh, the, uh, the test can actually achieve. And if it is smaller uh, than a certain amount, then you decide, well, I'm not even going to consider it uh, for testing, so I'm not going to pay for the multiplicity of that test. Um, so, for example, if we look at uh, two by two tables, then we lo don't look yet inside the table. We only look at the margins of the table, and based on the margin of the table, we can compute the most significant p values that we could get. If this most significant p value is actually not uh, uh, small enough, then we say, well, this is a non promising hypothesis, and we, uh, we won't even consider it. Uh, so we have a reduced set, not of M hypotheses, but actually of I, uh, K hypotheses, let's say, that, of, um, that we want to test. And then on these, uh, on these uh, hypotheses, we will apply uh, the BH procedure on mid-P values. Um, okay. Now, the, there uh, has been another uh, suggestion how to treat discreteness. Um, uh, that is also that was motivated also by the BH procedure, and it's in a very recent paper by Heise. Um, and uh, what he said was the following: uh, rec uh, So, recall that the BH adjusted p-values are these. What you have here in the numerator is actually the, the, an upper bound on the expected number of uh, uh, true null hypothesis that will be rejected if the threshold was the ith uh, largest p-value. Um, now, this is, uh, this is an upper bound uh, uh, if, um, uh, if you consider that under the null, the p-values are actually uniform. However, if uh, the p-values are not uniform, then the upper bound can actually be smaller. So instead of putting this uh, expression here in the numerator, uh, you, you put it more explicitly, uh, uh, this term here, which is the sum of the probability of the uh, uh, ith, uh, null hyper, under the ith null hypothesis that the p-value is less than or equal to, uh, um, to that threshold. And you sum these up. If, if the p-values are uh, uniform, then you get exactly the same, and you're back uh, to this. However, if the p-values are discrete, then this sum may be smaller than this expression here, and you actually get adjusted p-values that are smaller. And... Um, and therefore, uh, it's immediate that uh, this procedure I denoted by the DBH procedure. So the DBH procedure rejects at least as many null hypotheses as the BBH procedure. However, if uh, uh, that's a, uh, an important um, point, if all the null hypotheses are the same, then ex actually the DBH procedure uh, rejects exactly as many uh, null hypothesis as, uh, as the BH procedure. They, they become identical. Because if all the p-values are the same, and if uh, you got uh, uh, this, uh, this p-value, then uh, if the null hypothesis are the same, then the numerator is exactly uh, the same as this, and you don't get, gain anything uh, by using the DBH procedure. So the DBH procedure exploits the fact uh, that null distributions are not identical. They are discrete, but non-identical. Whereas with the mid p values, you still can get, uh, you still can gain. Uh, so here's uh, again the small example. So the BH adjusted uh, p values, uh, uh, the original uh, procedure are these. Uh, if we apply uh, the BH adjusted on mid p values, then we get this. Uh, we saw already these two columns. If we add the DBH adjusted p values, then we have uh, this column of numbers. So we can see that both 
these these two columns are actually um, have smaller adjusted p-values than the first column. However, they don't dominate each other. And some uh, um, uh, in in row five, it's the mid uh, p adjustment that is uh, leads to a smaller adjusted p-value. Whereas in uh, line seven, it is the, the DBH uh, uh, procedure that leads to a smaller adjusted p-value. Um, uh, we carried uh, a lot of simulations to see um, uh, the, the performance of these procedures and how they fare against each other. Uh, so the setting that we have here is uh, we have 100 hypotheses, uh, where in each hypothesis we test uh, the equality of two binomial proportions. So we have uh, five hypotheses uh, where uh, the binomial proportion in one group of people is 0.1 and in the other group of people it's 0.3. So these are our five non-null uh, hypotheses. And uh, we have 75 hypotheses where uh, the binomial proportion is the same in both groups and it is equal to 0.1. And we have 20 hypotheses where the binomial proportion in the two groups is the same and it's 0.01. And uh, what we see here uh, is um, a graph of uh, sample size versus FDR and sample size over uh, the average power. Um, so uh, the dotted line is uh, the FDR level of uh, the BH procedure on p-values. And uh, you see how conservative it is. It's supposed to be, uh, um, uh, it's supposed to be M0 over M time, times 5%. So it's supposed to be around here, and it's much, much lower. It's below 0 0.2, 0 0.02. Um, uh, and then uh, the, the FDR level of the BH procedure on mid-P values plus the Torone adjustment are the dashed line here, and the DBH procedure FDR level is uh, uh, the solid line. So uh, the FDR level is highest. It's still below the nominal level, but it is highest for the DBH procedure. And not surprisingly, then, also uh, the uh, power is the highest for the DBH procedure. It is uh, a close second is uh, the, the BH procedure on mid-P values plus uh, Terone. And, uh, and finally, the BH procedure on P values uh, has lower power. We see that this uh, 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 difference in power actually decreases as the sample size uh, gets larger because then the P values become less and less discrete. But uh, for, uh, uh, for sample sizes of, say, one, uh, 100 or uh, 50, it can be uh, uh, between uh, 10 and 30% uh, gain in power by using the discrete procedures. Um, another proce uh, so so uh, these were adjustments that are for the step-up uh, FDR procedure. Uh, another uh, procedure is uh, the step-down procedure of uh, Benjamin and Liu in 1999. I'm going to refer to it as the BL procedure. Uh, the BL adjusted p-values are, are these. And uh, basically, if the BL uh, procedure at level Q rejects all hypotheses whose BL adjusted p-values are below this, uh, this level Q. Um, so we, and it has uh, nice uh, properties as well. We know that for, uh, for the BL procedure has proven control of the FDR for independence. And we know uh, that uh, in, in under some dependencies, it also control, uh, controls the FDR. Uh, what we're going to suggest uh, here is um, a discrete analog to the BL procedure. So what we have here in the, in the BL procedure, this, this term is actually the probability that the minimum of M minus I plus one uh, null hypothesis is below this threshold. The, the, um, the i sorted p-value. Um, now, this this is this probability if uh, indeed the p-values under the null are uniform. However, if they are not uniform, then the probability it may be actually smaller. So we can write it explicitly um, like this, and this term is necessarily smaller uh, than this term for discrete uh, p-values. Uh, so basically, we have uh, adjusted p-values that are smaller. Uh, than, um, uh, than the Benjaminian Liu adjusted p-values, and therefore we will have more rejection and more power. In addition, uh, we were able to show that uh, uh, under independence of the p-values or some dependency, the discrete, uh, this, this DBL procedure, the discrete Benjaminian Liu procedure, controls the FDR at the nominal level. So basically what it says is that uh, for discrete uh, uh, 
uh, for discrete data, uh, actually uh, this the Benjaminian U procedure should not be used, and instead the DBL procedure uh, should be used because it uh, improves on power and guarantees uh, the same uh, control of uh, the FDR level. And uh, here are the values uh, for uh, the small example. Again, uh, we can also do the mid p values and apply the mini mini liu procedure. Uh, this is what you have in the third column here. Here are the adjusted p value of the DBL procedure, and here are the uh, BL um, uh, adjusted uh, p values. We see again that these two dominate uh, the first column, but they dom don't dominate each other. Um, and in the simulation setting that I described to you before, uh, then we see the same uh, ty kind of picture, however uh, more conservative, uh, that uh, the FDI level of the Benjamin liu procedure is uh, the smallest, a close second, uh, well, uh, a not so close, second is uh, the Benjamin liu on mid p-values with the Tarone adjustment, and then the FDR is largest for the DBL procedure, and uh, again, also the DBL procedure has uh, largest power. A close second is that uh, the BL procedure with mid p values and the uh, Benjamin Liu procedure uh, has uh, lower power. Uh, however, as the sample size increases, these differences uh, uh, go down. So, in conclusion, um, the FDR level may be much lower than the nominal level when applying the BH or the BL procedure at level Q on discrete test statistics. Now, the discrete analogs have a PR level that is closer to the nominal level, and they are more powerful. Um, uh, in simulations, what we see is that the DBH and the DBL procedure were typically more powerful than the mid P value plus Torone adjustments. Uh, however, the gain in power of, uh, of these discrete procedures comes from the fact that the tests are not identically distributed uh, under the null. Um, now, future research will be to actually further close the gap uh, towards the nominal level Q. There's still room for improvement. Perhaps use new, perhaps use new cutoffs for discrete step-up or uh, uh, step-down procedures. <coughs> Another thing to do is to incorporate an estimate of the number of true null hypotheses. And um, uh, finally, exploit uh, the dependency between the tests for specific applications. For example, in GWAS, the SNPs are actually uh, we, um, associated, and we can exploit uh, this dependency. Uh, I'd like to add also that uh, this is joint work. I uh, should have done, said that in the beginning with uh, my uh, master's student, Adas Gul. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>